थैंक यू सो मच फॉर वॉचिंग आई विल सपोर्ट टू यू गेटिंग यूर डिजायर बैंड स्कोर इन यूर आई एस एग्जाम इफ यू नीड ए प्रडिक्शन मटीरियल यू कैन चेक माई इंस्टाग्राम पेज लिंक अवेलेबल इन ए डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स ऑल ओवर प्रूफ ऑफ प्रीवियस एग्जाम यू कैन सी हेयर रीडिंग प्रडिक्शन राइटिंग स्पीकिंग हंड्रेड परसेंट फ्रॉम अवर प्रडिक्शन मटीरियल एंड दिज यूट्यूब चैनल ओनली फॉर यू एंड एवरी डे आई विल अपलोड लिसनिंग प्रडिक्शन वीडियोज फॉर यूर इम्प्रूवमेंट्स इफ यू नीड प्रडिक्शन मटीरियल दैन यू कैन ड्रॉप मी मैसेज ऑन माई वट्सएप नंबर व्हाट्सएप नंबर यू कैन सी ऑन योर स्क्रीन नाइन एट सेवन सिक्स फाइव सेवन डबल सिक्स नाइन फाइव एंड टेल मी अबाउट योर नेम योर एग्जाम डेट एंड योर लोकेशन एंड आई विल सेंड यू एक्यूरेट प्रडिक्शन मटीरियल लाइक रीडिंग लिसनिंग राइटिंग एंड स्पीकिंग मस्ट कमेंट योर बैड स्कोर इन कमेंट सेक्शन First you have some time to look at questions 1 to 10. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully to the conversation and answer questions 1 to 10. Good times holidays, John speaking. How may I help you? Oh, hello. I'm calling to complain about a holiday we've just had. Oh dear. I'm sorry to hear about that. Yes, we're very disappointed. What I need to do is to take some information from you so that I can look up the relevant files and then we can discuss the specific problems. Would that be all right with you? Yes, I hope it doesn't take too long. Oh no. Let me just get a form ready. First, the name, please, of the person who booked the holiday. Well, our surname's Sharp. S H like a knife. Yes, but with an e on the end. And a first name I'm Alice, but I think it was my husband who actually booked the trip. His name's Andrew. Fine. And then the address, please. It's flat 4, Beaconsfield. That's B E A C O N S F I E L D. House. That's Winchester. And it's S O 2 um 4 E R. Thank you. And could I take a telephone number? We're on 0374-56561 at home. Or do you mean during the day? Then my work number's 0374-55793. I'll put the work one down, assuming that's normal office hours. Oh, yes. The next thing is, do you have a note of your booking reference? I think so. Uh would it start 74? Uh no, usually with two or three letters. Uh-huh. Oh, is this it? M H. That sounds like it. And then double six G4. Thank you. Right, what's next? Uh-huh. Now, did you book in conjunction with any kind of special offer? Uh or did you book directly with us? or maybe through a scheme your employer's part of? Oh, okay. No, I think yes, we were using an offer from a credit card company. They always seem to have offers on. You get something with every bill, don't you? Yes, so many. Fine. And now insurance. Did you have an insurance policy that came with your booking? Well, no. I mean it came under our gold star policy, so we didn't need extra. No, that's fine. It's just a check. All right, nearly there. Now, what type of holiday was it? Well, not very 
no, OK, it was called A Midwinter Break in the brochure. Thank you. And when was the holiday? We just got back on January the 21st, and we started on the 16th. Fine. Right. I'm sorry about all that. No, I understand. So, what was the problem you encountered? There were two things that disappointed us, actually. Right. In the first place, we were told that when we arrived at the station, a taxi would meet us and take us straight to the house. But in fact, there wasn't one there. We had to wait for ages and then pay for one ourselves. So that was inconvenient and expensive. Oh, I'll look into that, see what went wrong. And the other problem was that we'd been promised there would be a bicycle for each of us stored at the house, ready to use. But there were only three, which is no good for a family of four. No, it wouldn't be. OK, well, I'll check into that as well. Now, if you can give me a few hours, I'll get back to you this afternoon, and then we can discuss... That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to Section 2. Section 2. You will hear a talk about opportunities for temporary jobs. First you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen to the first part of the talk and answer questions 11 to 15. I'd like to welcome you to the presentation. It's nice to see so many of you here and I hope that everybody ends up with suitable employment as a result of attending. Now, as you know, we at Select Hotel Recruitment are able to offer a range of work at the better hotels in the area. This month is no exception, and I'll take you through some of what we have on offer. The first job is reception assistant, and there are three vacancies for this position at the Park Hotel. This is quite a varied job, and in fact I should point out that at certain times of the day it will involve heavy lifting when guests' luggage arrives or perhaps deliveries come in, so bear that in mind when deciding whether to apply for this post. The Park Hotel has quite an international flavour, so you'll need to speak at least two foreign languages. Many guests, of course, travel by car, and you may have to take their vehicles around to the car park, so you will need to have a valid driving licence, and you will not be allowed to do the job if you haven't. They also say that basic computer skills, such as word processing, would be an advantage, although this isn't a requirement. OK, now, the next job is General Assistant, and there are four vacancies for this at the Avenue Hotel. To be honest, the pay is rather low, but there are compensatory factors that you should bear in mind when considering whether to apply. The hotel will provide you with all your meals while you're working, and they will also train you in all the aspects of the job and then issue you with a certificate, which, of course, could be very valuable to you in the future. Right. The third job on offer is catering assistant, and Hotel 56 are looking for four people to fill these vacancies at their smart new premises. As you know, this hotel is popular with exclusive travellers, and so you'll need to wear the distinctive staff uniform, which you're provided with. Don't consider this job unless you're fairly flexible about when you work, as the hotel will require you to work nights for this job, 
and you'll need to travel to and from the hotel as it's situated just outside the city. Well, that's some basic information about the opportunities we currently have on offer. Now you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the talk and answer questions 16 to 20. Now, if you would like to apply for one of these jobs, you'll need to follow our recruitment process. It might seem complicated, but we guarantee the hotels we work with to provide carefully vetted staff. So, the first thing you'll need to do is fill in one of these, a personal information form. It's pretty straightforward and should only take you a few minutes. Once you've done that and handed it in, we'll give you a questionnaire about your skills to do. Again, I don't expect this to take you very long. We then look through the information about you and pass on our recommendations to the relevant hotel. Hopefully, you'll be accepted by your chosen hotel. Assuming you are, you will then proceed to the next step of the process and attend a general course of training. This is designed to be helpful and realistic, so an important part of the course is role-play activities. You should have some fun while you learn. OK, and after that, the final step is that you'll be contacted by the hotel you're going to work for and they'll post you a video about themselves and the work involved. Watching this will constitute further specific training for your job. Well, I hope that's reasonably clear at this stage. Are there any questions on what I've said so far? That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to Section 3. Section 3. You will hear a discussion between two students, David and Jane, and their tutor, Dr Wilson, about their group research project into local history. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen to the first part of the conversation and answer questions 21 to 26. Hello, David, Jane. Hello. Hi. So, how's the local history project going? Are you making good progress? Yes and no. Oh? Well, we anticipated problems of various kinds. None of the group has much experience of collaborating on projects. But we spent some time discussing how to go about it and thrashed out what seemed a useful approach. But it seems that Jane and I are the only ones actually following the plan. That's meant that the whole project has been lacking coordination, and so we've fallen behind our schedule. I see. That's tricky. Yes, it is. We felt that the targets had been defined, so we'd all know what to deal with. But looking back, we probably should have really specified individual responsibilities. As it is, we only have a loose sense of what should be done by who. Well, this is quite a common problem, actually. I take it that you've had enough group meetings, so you're looking for an effective solution. If you go to the resource centre, I think you'd find the advice service they provide there helpful at this point. Thanks. We'll go there later. 
On a specific note, I think we've got carried away with recruiting people to interview at the expense of building up the reference section, which I don't think is going to be solid enough. Do you think that'll be a major problem? Hmm. I'd have to see how much is there to be sure. But, well, you'll have to be pragmatic at this point, I think. What you'd better do is ensure your methodology is really strong, so at least you can't be faulted on that front. Then, if people challenge your results, at least you've carefully reported how you reach them. Do you see what I mean? Yes. yes. So? Yes, I think one resource in relation to that that we haven't exploited as fully as we might is the Internet. I've taken a lot of journals off the library shelves to go through, but actually there are websites where you can call up lists of approaches or data sets really quickly. I think that's a good idea, yes. Now you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen to the rest of the conversation and answer questions 27 to 30. Now, let's think about the field trip and at least make sure that goes as well as possible. You're going to Cambridge on the 22nd. The Monday, yes. It's quite soon now. And in the morning you'll be travelling and then getting settled into the hotel. Uh-huh. But you need to get down to work after lunch, of course. Now, I've arranged for you to have a look at some useful visual material, especially photographs and old magazines and newspapers, which is included in an exhibition at the library in the university. That sounds like a good starting point. There's quite a lot on show, so that'll occupy most of the afternoon. Then the following morning, I want you to go and talk to someone in the city library. His name's Jarvis Gregson. He works in the education section there, and he's an expert on the area's history. Don't, of course, forget to take a tape recorder with you, so that you can record what he tells you. Mm -hmm. And to have our questions ready. Indeed. OK, and the afternoon's free for you to wander around, get the feel of the place. Do some sightseeing. As you wish. It's a beautiful city. Mm. But it's back to work on Wednesday morning. Concentrate on the central area and walk around methodically. You'll have the plans I'm getting ready for you from different periods, and your task is to compare those with the makeup of the city today. Make notes on how different kinds of shops and businesses have grown up, what's gone, and so on. I hope the weather's good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, and in the afternoon, I want you to think about producing your own records along the lines of the ones in the city library's archives. The history of the castle is very important to the city's development, so use a camera to get some pictures that reflect that, if you can, showing it in relation to the buildings and spaces around it. We'll try. And when do we travel back? That's up to you. You can either decide to... That is the end of Section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to Section 4. Section 4. You will hear part of a talk for tourism students about the London Eye, a modern tourist attraction in London. First you have some time to look at questions 31 to 35.
Now listen to the first part of the talk and answer questions 31 to 35. Today, I want to focus on some of the major sites that attract tourists to cities, and I'm going to begin with the London Eye. This giant wheel has, in a very few years, become one of the major attractions of London, and thus in the world. It's both simple in concept and awesome in delivery. Its creators are husband and wife architects David Marks and Julia Barfield. It was on their kitchen table in South London in 1993 that the first drawings for the London Eye were made, as the couple, who usually worked directly for clients, were entering a competition, the brief of which was to design millennium landmarks for the capital. In fact, nobody won, and the whole idea was scrapped, but the couple remained convinced that their dream should be pursued. They started to piece the project together and were soon attracting the attention of the press. And it wasn't long before British Airways had started to show an interest and then became a partner. As the project unrolled, everyone involved began to realise the sheer scale of what they were undertaking. It would be the largest observation wheel ever built and over 1,700 people from a total of five countries would play a part in its construction. Nearly every one of its many parts and techniques needed to be invented, simply because they had never existed before. Transportation of the components would be on a scale reminiscent of pyramid building. Bringing them in meant that large parts had to fit under the various bridges of the River Thames, so this had to be timed to coincide with tides along its length. And even when completed, the eye continues to be huge in its requirements. A small army of people are employed to look after it, with 350 hours maintenance being required every week, and apparently strange demands such as washing all its glass with nothing but distilled water having to be met. But the views the eye affords across London make it all worthwhile. And it's easy to understand why the eye has become one of London's chief tourist assets. Now you have some time to look at questions 36 to 40. Now listen to the rest of the talk and answer questions 36 to 40. So, how is that great wheel held up? How did it get there? The starting point was, of course, the ground. And while parts of the wheel itself were still being constructed in various countries, tension piles were being driven into the ground beside the River Thames. This was the first step, and once these were securely in place, a base cap was installed over them as a kind of lock, with two giant plinths pointing up onto which an A-frame was attached, like a giant letter. All this took many months and incredible effort, but meant that the spindle could be installed around which the great wheel would turn. Now the project really was in business, and the vast rim, with spokes like an outsized bicycle wheel, could be brought in. The passenger capsules were assembled and hung onto the rim, each one linked by mounting rings that would support eager viewers as they rose above London. And the last thing to be built is the first thing the visitor encounters, the boarding platform laid down underneath. The whole process employed thousands of people in total and was avidly watched by millions. How long the eye will stay is uncertain, but any talk of dismantling it always meets with immediate protest. That is the end of Section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.